This training will offer you, the job seeker, advice on how to job search, navigate the hiring process, start your job, work with an employer to offer you the support that you need to retain this job long term and be successful in the job. Welcome to Maristem's Breaking Barriers, transformative autism program, job seeker training video. My name is Harrison, Harry Lane, an individual with neurodiversity that has been diagnosed on the autism spectrum. I will be your host and guide throughout this training. TAP was built back in 2018 as a training for employers on best practices for hiring and retaining an individual with autism or neurodiversity in their workplace. Why was the training built? The TAP training offered suggestions to employers on how to build a culture around neurodiversity, how to interview you that is not like a traditional interview, and build a support network so that you can be successful on the job. The goal is for long-term employment. The response from employers has been positive and they are ready to hire you. They just need to know what supports you need to be successful on the job. Help them help you to succeed. Although we may think a little differently than neurotypical people, we want the same things when it comes to living a life of our choice. We want to be able to choose where we live, what we do, and who we do it with. Finding the right job, wherever we are in our career development, is key to ensuring we can achieve all three. A job that is a good fit for us allows us to earn the money we need to live where we want to live, purchase goods, products and services that matter to us, and engage with people we want to build relationships with. Another outcome of finding a job we really like is building more and more workplace skills and competencies that allow us to advance our career. And when we advance, we earn more. And when we earn more, we have more choices. And that's what it's all about. This training will offer you, the job seeker, advice on how to job search navigate the hiring process, start your job, how you can work with an employer to offer you the support that you need to retain this job long term and be successful in the job. Throughout this training, we're going to hear from an employer, a job seeker, a job readiness coach, a job coach and a parent on the advice to be the best job seeker and employee that you could possibly be. Let's meet our first guest. Tap has this great relationship with Raylene's Bel Air and Nob Hill, a mid-sized grocery chain in Northern California. Bahar is a culture champion and passionate about the employee lifestyle. Bahar Abulared is a talent acquisition leader at Raylene's, Nob Hill, and Bel Air. Raylene's is a champion in the industry for inclusive hiring. Welcome, Bahar. Thanks for joining us. Thank you, Harry, for having me. It's been a joy partnering with you in the TAP program. We at Rayleigh's are committed to creating an inclusive workplace for our team members, and the TAP training continues to help us identify opportunities to improve on that. We, along with other companies who are committed to an inclusive workplace, continue to take the TAP training and share the knowledge that we've gained to improve the journey for employment. We have five tips to help you along your journey to employment. The first is to review the job posting in detail. Make sure that you feel comfortable doing the work that is required of you. And if there's any questions that you have, prepare them ahead of time so that you can ask the employer upon the time for interview. The second is the application process. There's lots of questions on there and most of the information that's required or requested is important for the employer to make sure that they have what they need to invite you to an interview. If you need help answering any of the questions on the application, there's job readiness coaches like Albert, who you're gonna hear from in a little bit, who can support you in the quest to answer those questions. Again, you can also ask family or friends as well. The third is the interview itself. Should you get invited to an interview, be prepared to ask the questions that you identified during the application and, and job description review, and also be on time and be presentable. It's really important to make sure that we show up professionally for our interviews. During that time, you can also be prepared to answer any questions about what you bring to the table and your abilities and strengths, as well as what you need help with. 
And that's really number four, is to be prepared to talk about what you can do to be a great asset to the team and what you need support with, whether that's accommodations in the form of schedule or changes that need to be made to the work, or even headphones or things that you might need in order to feel comfortable at the workplace. Then number five is be reliable. Show up to do the job and be presentable when you do it. If ever you need to make adjustments to your schedule, communicate with your leaders and they will respect the needs that you have and make sure that they can meet you halfway. Thank you, Bahar. Great suggestions. Now we are going to hear from a job seeker themselves, Quentin Winbush. Quentin has been in the workforce for a few years, participated in a variety of internships, and has spent some time at college too. Welcome, Quentin. Thank you so much for being here. Quentin, there is so much to think about when it comes to being job ready. What do you think is most important and why? That is a great question, Harry. What I've learned from Mary Stem is that Mary Stem has taught me the way that you approach um, getting a job as well as the way you approach actually maintaining a job are, are the most important skills that you could learn um, with job readiness. As a person who is neurodiverse, I do um, have trouble with uh, multiple different things in my life. Some of those things being um, learning how to organize things as well as learning how to be adequately prepared for situations. But with the Mary Stem uh, method that I've learned here, I've learned how to balance the thoughts that are in my head with the feelings that are in my heart and the movements that are from my body. And I believe that the first thing that job seekers like me should do um, in their lives is assess themselves um, when they are at work actually doing a job, as well as help, as well as get help and assistance um, to actually do these things, just as I have gained help and assistance here at Mary Stem. Another thing that that job seekers like me should do is make a one pager. The reason why is because a one pager lets employees know what you are actually good at in the work area, as well as um, what things you actually need extra time and assistance with in the work area. Another thing that job seekers um, should do is actually improve their soft skills. The reason why is because People who are neurodiverse are good at doing um, very specific jobs, and the reason why is because those are hard skills. But with soft skills, we do have problems actually um, doing different types of soft skills. And one good example of a soft skill is communicating. Thank you, Quentin. We look forward to hearing more from you later on in the training. There are organizations of people all over ready to help us be job ready. It's so exciting. We're going to hear from a job readiness coach. Albert Juarez, job readiness instructor at Maristem. Albert has been in the field for nearly two decades and has some great pointers about being job ready. Welcome, Albert. I've worked with uh, hundreds of people and uh, getting them job ready. Uh, each one, of course, has a unique path and equally a unique way of learning. And um, as far as motivation goes, definitely in order to help somebody to get into the workforce, they truly have to be motivated. And as far as the uh, readiness goes, they are going to invest time and time is important to succeed. And if you're not ready, that's okay. We'll take the time to get you ready. And uh, once you are ready, well, there's two things that are going to be very absolute, that are absolutely important to have in today's workforce. You need to have a resume. And your resume really has to showcase all your skills, your talents, and basically your abilities. Uh, and if you actually haven't had a lot of jobs, it's okay, we can build it so employers can see what you're capable of. Um, secondly, as far as your master application, it is also critical. Employers really want those applications to be filled out absolutely correct. And oftentimes the people that do that are the people that do get the interviews. So very important to, to fill it out accurately. Um, if you need any help uh, with either resume or master application, just ask. People want to help you. Great advice, Albert. If you are wondering how am I going to remember everything that we talked about today, we have a cheat sheet for you. Our 10 best practices for job seekers located on our website, tapautism.org. You can download a copy there. The word support has been mentioned quite a bit already. 
Let's take some time to dive into that. Aaron Sherm is executive director at Meristem. Aaron has been instrumental in developing the Meristem method that helps neurodiverse job seekers, employers, and support network members work together on finding good fits for everyone. What do you want them to know and understand when it comes to their support network and systems of support? Thank you, Harry, and welcome to all you job seekers. I hope we can help you along your journey today with a few simple things. Oftentimes, getting out into the work, work world can be complicated, overwhelming, and challenging. We like to think of it like a map sometimes. A map is a picture of the terrain that can often look complicated, but once decoded and once you figure out how to read it, simplifies the process a whole lot. Uh, but to learn this map, it often requires support. Parents, teachers, coaches, friends, helping us decode this map and learn the language. I'm here today with a parent who supported her son, Christopher, in navigating the complicated world of finding a job and how Maristem has helped her. Lisa, would you share a little bit more on how you have helped Christopher navigate this process? Thank you, Aaron. I just want to say that I'm proud of all of you for taking the time to watch this video and training. As soon as my son showed that he was eager for work, I tried to get him in touch with people and services that could help him. And today you are doing just that. My advice for you is to communicate to your parents and to your support network. Um, share with us what you're thinking and especially anything that you're feeling challenged by. We are here to help and we're here to help you overcome those challenges. When my son was offered a position at a specialized boutique, I asked if I could sit down with a job coach and to set up a plan that would introduce him to the new workplace and to teach the new employer about my son, what he's really good at, and areas that he struggles in. And that way, he, the employer would know how to help him. Um, Ari, his job coach, was amazing. The true definition of a support network. Ari, can you share with everyone how you supported Chris and the employer? Thank you, Lisa. I would love to answer that. Being in a job coach role, it's just really important to get to know your job seeker when, um, as, an, as a potential employee or a young professional, um, finding out what their challenges are and what they, they struggle with, but also finding out what their strengths are so we can play to those to overcome those challenges. Um, once we found those things out, it's also really important or even more important to communicate with the employer themselves as to what duties they need the job seeker to accomplish um, and also what accommodations they, they may need. Um, as of where I stand, I know the job seeker better than them at this point, but with constant communication, um, they, we are hoping, the goal is to get them to a place where they feel empowered enough that I can disappear and, and not be a part of it anymore because now they know a population that they didn't before and that's kind of what inclusion's about. Um, when it comes to Christopher himself, he already loves to please people, he loves to do a good job and he's already built up such a good work ethic that um, for him it was more just remembering the tasks that he had to do and it was a I say easy fix, but it took a while to get there. He just needed to keep a to-do list in his pocket that he rewrote every day and he could reference it when he felt he needed it. And then I think he found a little sense of accomplishment crossing those tasks out. That is some really great advice, everyone, isn't it? I don't know what I would have done if my mother had not offered me support. My mother was integral in helping me find Maristem, and Maristem was key in offering me supports that we're talking about today. I want to go back to something that Quinton mentioned. He brought up this idea of a one-pager. As we talk about support, we really want to emphasize the importance of you, the job seeker, going to the employer with the supports that you need so that they have the ability to help you, right? They can't help you if they don't know what supports you need. Uh, we have an example of a one-pager, and we're gonna use Quinton's uh, one-pager for an example. I wanna thank Quinton so much for allowing us to use his one-pager as an example for this training. We're now gonna spend some time going over it. First, 
See how we start with focusing on your assets and your strengths. This is really important for all job seekers to remember. We must learn how to lead with and focus on our strengths. We know that if we are given the proper kind of support, our best abilities will come out. Notice how this section also focuses on both hard and soft skill strengths. Next, let's take a look at the next section where we share who in our lives provides support to us. This is important because we want to make sure the employer is open to allowing these people to be a part of the network that we need. If an employer is not ready to embrace our support network, we may need to consider applying somewhere else. Here is what we feel is the most important part. Why? Well, as more and more employers are going through the training on how to be inclusive, what they are learning is that we will need some level of support in the workplace and they are ready to learn what that is and how to give it. But how can they give it if we don't share what situations may be challenging for us and how to help us through that challenge? Notice how Quentin put a specific area he may need support in. That's the major bullet point. Then he followed with the examples of how the employer can help support him. That's the sub bullet points. We cannot emphasize this enough, how important this one pager process is. We know quite a few job seekers that are not even sure what to put there. That is where you use your support network. Your support network can be a mom, a dad, a family member, a job coach, a counselor, anyone like that. But remember, no one can help if you don't ask for it. And remember this, we all need some level of help. I'd like to touch on another principle of, Maristem, of the Maristem method, that is self-development. One of our main focuses is being able to look at yourself and analyze and understand the things that I'm interested in and the things that are important to me and try to figure out the best path forward. I'd like to bring in Albert, uh, one of our job readiness coaches, who could, who's going to talk a little bit about the specific ways in which you can go about figuring out what will work for you and the type of job that you can find and make sense for you. Sure, Aaron. Um, often uh, someone may think about something that they want to do, but not really know how to go about the initial thought and, you know, really examining and figuring out if it's something that really makes sense to pursue. Uh, this actually fits into what you were talking about earlier with Quentin uh, when he was sharing about his balance between what we think and, you know, what we feel and what we do. Uh, to help with that process, uh, we use a system that starts with researching so we could have a base of information, you know, to work with. And of course, then we move to observing. Um, we want to use what we know, uh, have learned, and see how things look as far as an actual life. Uh, then we challenge ourselves to see how well uh, we can exist within the element uh, to be present in. Um, once we've done all that, then we just need to talk about it and to communicate and uh, so we can really start to determine what makes sense as the next step. Thank you, Albert. That was spot on. I'd like to take the time now to bring Lisa Odom back into the conversation. Lisa, earlier you mentioned how important it was to have a circle of support around Christopher as he was looking for a job. I'd like to go a little bit further and, and hear your perspective on the Maristem method and its its success around supporting Christopher to be gr more independent through our areas of self-leadership and self-advocacy where he takes on more of the responsibility and moves beyond his circle of support. Could you share a few more tidbits on, on Christopher's journey around that? Aaron, I'm so glad you asked me that question. I really understand how important it is for all of you to have the tools that you need to lead your lives and to advocate not just for your needs, but for your wants too. Um, I've learned through research, observation, presence, and communication. Um, using your method, Aaron, um, that each of you watching this training right now have the support in your lives that is either helping you understand why you might need to push a little harder or that you're moving too fast and you need to have help to understand why it's a good time to push a little slower. Um, this all leads to self-advocacy, leadership, and success. That was awesome. Thank you, Lisa. I'd like to ask Bahar from Rayleigh's to come back up 
and talk a little bit about how an employer is positioned to, to, uh, uh, to change the inner internal environment of their organization to support adults with neurodiversity and any of their employees to be successful team members. Bahar, one of our, the principles that we work with in the method at Meristem is a two-way street. Two-way street meaning me as the job seeker needing to do my part to more successfully engage in the workforce and you as the employer being able to create an environment where an employee can be successful. Could you talk a little bit about how Rayleigh's does this in your environment? Thanks, Aaron. I'd be happy to. I was drawn to Rayleigh's not only for how we take care of the people in the communities we serve, but also the people within the organization. We believe that each individual makes a unique contribution and makes a difference in everything that we do. And one of the ways to identify that early on is to have an open conversation with our candidates about their needs and what it is that they can, we can do to support them. So we just ask that each candidate advocate for themselves as early on as possible in the process. And throughout their journey of employment with us, we have open conversations about their needs. And the TAP training actually really illuminated some opportunities for us to continue to enhance on these existing processes. And we just believe that all of these fundamentals can help to encourage and create an inclusive workplace for everyone. Erin, I'm so glad we got to do this training together. Um, in my current role and position, you know, even though I've come so far, I've had to use so many supports. I mentioned my mom in the video that I've, it's wonderful that I've had to, I, I, I enjoy being able to use the supports. Everybody needs supports. Um, so that's a wonderful thing. Um, I was wondering, um, how did you think this training went? Yeah, I think it was awesome. I mean, I felt really grateful that uh, people took the time to even go through this. It was really cool to hear from so many different people on different aspects of support circle and things that an employee needs to be thinking about in and around like how you get a job and like the things that you're responsible for that we don't just want to put on the employer. Uh, I'm just thinking a little bit about uh, what Bahar was saying um, around Rayleigh's and how they're, you know, they're working as employers to create a space. But what, what, what would like, what were some of your big takeaways from Bahar in and around um, you know, what an employee should be thinking about when, when having a conversation with Rayleigh's and how they can m most effectively engage. I think that Bahar's statement's very important. Um, what Rayleigh's has done is very important in allowing the job seeker to offer their support because, you know, they have the space. So it's really important to what Quentin said, like being able to actually do it. You use your support network, you develop a plan, and you go out there and you show the, uh, the company what your supports are. Because what I found with Rayleigh's working with them is that if the employer knows what supports you need, they can modify the environment in the grocery store to fit your needs. Totally, and it's funny because uh, when I was talking in my segment uh, a little bit about the Marisem method, I, I mentioned a two-way street and mm. it being important for dialogue going back and forth both from the employer and the employee. And it seemed like one of the reoccurring themes was how important it is for me as an employee to be speaking up and advocating for my circle of support uh, and letting them and letting the employer know, hey, this is what I'm coming in with. These are the people that help me. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, just kind of building that out and being open. What from your experience and what some of the other people say, what would you say are some of the most important things to be talking about when you're having that conversation with your employer? What systems of support do I need? Basically, what am I unwilling to do in this job? And what am I willing to do? What systems of support do I need to be successful? One key here is, was Ari, Maristem's lovely job coach. Ari was key in bridging the gap between Christopher and Lisa in having a conversation, bringing everybody to the table so that Lisa's understanding what is Christopher doing, there's no confusion. And then uh, whatever um, Ari was working on with Christopher, whatever they're dis discovering, they, they share that with the employer. So the employer is also aware this is what they're working on. That's awesome. I'm just so happy that we got Harry uh, in on this because Harry's been through it, Harry deals with it, and Harry's talking to all, 
hundreds of people about some mm-hmm. of these challenges that, that are coming up in the workforce. Uh, any final words before we thank everybody? And we'll be back. So don't more content to come. So don't stay tuned to what we're bringing and talking about today. But hopefully Harry and I will be back with more. But Harry, any final words before we wrap up? No, I think that um, this is wonderful. I just encourage every job seeker to uh, go out there and really use your system of support. And, and you can totally do it. It's not as e- difficult. It's stressful as it might seem. And if you use your support network, you'll have less anxiety. Thank you everyone for watching our training video. I want to take a moment to thank all of our guests today. I want to thank Aaron from Maristem, uh, our employer, Bahar Abularaid from Rayleigh's, our job readiness guru, Albert, our job coach, Ari, our support network mother, Lisa, whose son, Christopher, now has meaningful employment. Go, Christopher! And most importantly, our job seeker, Witten Winbush for having the courage to come out to the world and offer what support he needs so that he can be successful and for allowing us to use his one pager as an example in this training. And finally, I want to thank you, the job seeker, for watching this video to the end and for being willing to go out there and look for a job, ask for support from your network, and offer the employer what supports you might need to be successful in the long term. Thank you.